feeling down, depressed? We'll try Botox. The first studies on the impact of Botox on depression were conducted in 2006. No, Arnold, Botox isn't injected into the head, but into the neck. Botox relaxes the muscles. Our brain evaluates our state just like it does with others. For example, when we see someone frowning, we think they're sad. Similarly, the brain interprets our relaxation and lack of frowning as a good mood and releases the happiness hormone serotonin. As a therapy for depression, Botox is injected into the area between the eyebrows at a dosage of around 30 units. Well, uh, we need a new Arnold. Headache? Migraine again? Well, there's a solution. Symptoms can be reduced with Botox. RNA, Botox doesn't plump up lips or other body parts. One in 10 suffers from migraines, and women are three times more likely. Botox is injected into the muscles of the head, face, and neck to treat migraines. It's a neurotoxin that relaxes muscles. However, in 2% of cases, temporary paralysis of facial muscles may occur with this therapy. Nervous about getting a Botox injection? You're not alone. Six million people get Botox shots every year worldwide. That's roughly the population of Finland. Have you ever wondered how we choose our friends? First impressions are the foundation of most friendships. It only takes seven seconds for a person to assess someone and lay the groundwork for further interaction. Building a friendship is similar to playing a video game. You share information about yourself, and the more frequent and successful your interaction quests are, the stronger your bond becomes. But the most critical element of friendship is oxytocin, the very hormone that convinces you your friend won't spill your secrets. Trust allows us to overlook the flaws, quirks, and eccentricities of our friends. Unfortunately, as you age, you'll retain only the strongest bonds due to social changes and biological factors. Send this video to your friends so they can also learn your friendships rely solely on the chemical processes in your brain. You'll be surprised, but you have plenty of Botox at home. Botox was discovered by the physician Justinus Kerner in 1820. He investigated cases of poisoning from canned sausages and found that this poisoning caused temporary paralysis. Botulitum toxin is the most potent natural poison produced by the bacterium Clostridium botulitum. These bacteria typically live in oxygen-deprived conditions, such as in canned goods, and cause botulism when ingested. However, when injected into muscles, it relaxes them, which is why it's used in cosmetology to prevent the formation of wrinkles. If Botox enters the brain directly, it will block nerve impulses, and the person will be paralyzed, unable to breathe, and will die. So it should be administered in small amounts intravenously. Arnold, have you actually started living a healthy lifestyle? Get dressed, Arnie, because with a body like yours, we could lose our entire female audience. Looking for similarities between you and Schwarzenegger? You have one at least, and that's your names. You're gonna have to start working out if you wanna have a body like his, and also give up on your usual diet. Or do you maybe have some other options? Arnold, are you serious? Steroids? First off, it's illegal. And secondly, I repeat this, it's illegal. Muscles consisting of protein compounds are built up due to micro tears, which are restored within a few days and make the muscles stronger and larger. Steroids are substances that, once inside the body, are converted into hormones that double the recovery process, while at the same time drastically increasing muscle volume. After taking so much testosterone, irreversible processes begin in the body. You'll see an increase in acne, a decrease in testicle size, and unwarranted aggression. Although I will know what caused it and why. Don't worry, Arnold. At least you'll have something else big. It seems this wannabe treatment is made just for lazy people like you. In fact, using steroids means you don't even have to exercise in order to gain 
gain weight. Of course, consuming so much testosterone will increase your libido. You'll want more physical attention almost immediately. Hey, Arnold, come on. That's just too much. So you decided to upload your photos to a dating app. Congratulations, you got a match. Judging by her photos, you have a lot in common. How are you going to surprise her on your first date? Great, Arnold. You two are definitely made for each other. Good morning, Arnold. I see you didn't wake up alone. What? Are you scared, Arnold? I forgot to tell you, testosterone affects women in its own special way. They get facial hair like men, and their voice becomes deeper and rougher. But don't rush out like that. It's dangerous, because your heart is not as good as it used to be. Now you can easily have a heart attack. I have so many more experiment ideas, but maybe we could transfer your consciousness to a flash drive. I wonder how many gigabytes we'll need. It's hard to believe, but Arnold's brain has a huge memory density. Its capacity is 2.5 million abstract gigabytes. For this, we'll need 2,500 hard drives with a volume of one terabyte each. Subscribe and hit like to learn more interesting facts. Poor guy. Don't worry, Arnie. Soon you're gonna be a cyborg. Half robot, half human. Then you won't be afraid of anything. Everyone else will be afraid of you. Hasta la vista, baby. A large part of the brain is occupied by various life processes. Even to fart, millions of neurons are needed. The volume of semantic memory, that is, information in symbols, knowledge about the world, is significantly less than the total volume. For instance, to learn all of English requires only 12 megabytes. Don't worry, Arnold. We managed to transfer all the data from your brain, though it really didn't turn out to be that much. Everything fit onto one flash drive. I even installed a couple of new features. Now, you, Arnold, can solve math problems without a calculator. The precise working memory of the brain can hold between 5 to 9 digits at a time. That's only about 40 bits, or 5 bytes. You can increase working memory by combining different elements. For example, 3, 5, 2, that's 3 elements. But 352, that's 1 element. Arnold, you can start living your usual life again. And now you don't have to worry about stomach pain from eating too much pizza. However, there are a few minor issues now, buddy. Toby doesn't recognize you. Lying on the bed is problematic, and you can't eat regular food. Regular food could cause a short circuit in your new cyber body. Congratulations, you have a chance to be the first person to get cloned. Get in the machine, Arnold. What could possibly go wrong? Now, let's do a little testing. Hmm, what's this? The cloning didn't work as I expected. Your brain is split in two with each of you having just one of the hemispheres. Blind. The corpus callosum connects the hemispheres of the brain and consists of 200 to 250 million nerve fibers, each several centimeters long. If your grandma were to knit them into a thread, she could wrap it around the earth three times. That's amazing. Let's test your cognitive abilities. Well done, left-brained Arnold. Right Brain Arnold, what are you doing? Yep, yep, yep. Ah, right, the left hemisphere is responsible for language. The left hemisphere controls the right side of the body, and the right hemisphere controls the left. So if you remove the corpus callosum, as is done in severe cases of epilepsy, the person will initially confuse their left and right limbs. Let's get everything back to how it was. Get in the machine, Arnolds. Yes, one at a time. Don't push. We won't start without both of you anyway. Be careful. Hmm, seems to be jammed. Hang on a sec, buddy. Most areas of the brain in the two hemispheres are duplicated. Therefore, if one hemisphere is removed, or if a person is born with only one, the other hemisphere can compensate for the lost one's function, and the person can lead a totally normal life.
This little piggy is a little smarter than Arnold. And no, not because it has a Neuralink chip in its brain, but because she came here by bus, unlike our red-headed fool who parked his car with the Mafia for $50 an hour. At this conference, Elon Musk will demonstrate the process of installing an advanced microchip into the brain of these cute little monkeys and in the near future into the brain of a person. Arnold, stop teasing the primates with your keys. See? Great. Well, you had it coming, buddy. I don't understand how Elon could have invited such a doofus to his conference. From a scientific point of view, Neuralink is a fairly simple device. It's a set of electrodes that transmit electrical impulses from neurons in the brain to a computer. But from a technical point of view, it's an astonishingly complex device. Imagine that the brain is a big ball of extraordinarily tangled wires, and you need to carefully connect to it without damaging anything. Arnold, run! It's time to pay for parking or a tow truck truck is going to take your car. We need to get the keys from the chimpanzees as soon as possible. Who, with parking prices like these, you're going to have to live on dollar store ramen till the end of the month. Get in the monkey suit. You'll have better luck this way, trust me. I know it smells like butt cheese, but it's only for five minutes. One more time, Arnold. You can do it. Hey, dudes, where are you taking Arnold? Only I'm allowed to experiment on him. Elon, please be gentle with Arnold. But really, who am I talking to? I'm just a voice in the head of this dumbass. Arnold's brain is almost the same size as that of a primate, and this version of the chip will suit him perfectly. Thanks to Neuralink and Wi-Fi, Arnold can now communicate with other owners of this device via the power of thought. He also benefits from a tremendous increase in the speed of interaction with the Internet. Arnold, come on, concentrate. You can do it. Download Monkey Sign Language from the Internet. I never doubted that you'd succeed, Arnold. But I didn't think you'd drag it out for a whole day. I thought you were so stupid that even the Neuralink chip couldn't help you. But you just forgot to turn it on, you moron. Get ready, we're taking the bus back with Gertrude. Your car was sold to pay the parking fees. They got 600 bucks for it. <sighs> and today he signed up for an incredible experiment. Hey. It looks like Elon Musk wants to find out if we can develop telepathic abilities in a human being. Ah. Don't worry, Arnold. They'll let you go if you answer correctly. So, guess what's in the picture? Wrong! And on this one? No! Get it together, man! Such experiments were carried out in the 1950s in the USA. Their goal was to develop paranormal abilities in soldiers in order to gain an advantage in the Cold War. The test subjects were given LSD, since LSD significantly increases the activity of neural connections. Arnold, pull yourself together already. Even a rat learns faster than that. Well, true, this ain't no ordinary rat. He has a chip in his brain. Scientists proved the possibility of transmitting nerve impulses from a distance back in 2013. The rats were in different cities, but they acted together, thanks to electrodes implanted in their brains and the internet. It looks like Elon Musk is going to try all the different ways to develop telepathy on you at the same time. Arnold, stop! You haven't mastered your new skills yet, buddy. Mind reading has many benefits. Now, people can't hide anything from you. But I have to warn you, you won't like everything they think about. The pros in a relationship, you can immediately know if your partner really loves you or not. You can understand the language of animals and you can find your perfect match. But what if all people could read each other's minds? An ideal world without lies or falsehood. 
Or maybe not. Hey, mister, don't be offended if he thought your nose is too pimply. Gosh darn it, this is a disaster. No, Arnie, stop! Don't even think about it.